In the previous lesson, we brought you over to the web URL apachefriends.org and showed you how you can download and install ZAMP and get it up and running. This video is brought to you by EpiPies Academy. So with ZAMP, there's a really great community if you're looking for additional help. So there's a help forum over at community dot apachefriends.org and this will answer a lot of your questions in regards to XAMPP. There's a whole bunch of information here and people are regularly posting and interacting and discussing what they can do with XAMPP and any issues that they might be having with XAMPP. So quite a lot of great information in regards to XAMPP and how to use it within the community. So once you have XAMPP installed up and running, go ahead and run XAMPP. And this should bring you over to the control panel. So the control panel looks like this or a variation of something similar to this. And what we've got here is we've got the ability to start all of the different modules. So we can start Apache, which is the actual web server. We can also start MySQL, which is the database. And as well, there's additional options down here as well. So different services that we can get up and running. So first of all, you'll see that once we're running XAMPP, we've got a various options to set up XAMPP as well. So one of the main areas to configure XAMPP is, of course, the configure option. So there's different configure options. There's ability to configure each different module as well as configure XAMPP as a whole. So go ahead and click. So in this lesson, we're going to be looking at configuring of the entire application and not the servers yet and we're going to look at the different module and configurations of the modules in the upcoming lesson. So let's go ahead and open up config and the first thing that we've got within the config here is we've got the ability to change our default editor. So by default you're going to have an editor selected in here and it might not necessarily be the most ideal editor. So I also have notepad on my computer system and I would actually prefer to use notepad and what this is for when you hit the config file here and you configure any one of the config files for the different modules the config file needs a place to open and that place that it opens up is the default editor so that's what you're selecting over here and you also have a default browser in order to render out and try out the application so you can set that as well or if you just leave it blank if you just leave it empty like mine is then you're by default going to use the system default which uh, in my case as well is going to be Chrome or if I want to set a particular browser I can do that as well and so this is only for interactions within the control panel and it will reset the defaults here we can also auto start some of the modules which is another really great option within XAMPP because we have the ability to automatically start these modules uh, whereas you see here when we open this up we have to click start click start so this will save you a little bit of time if you're always looking at starting those same modules you can just check those off save it and those are going to automatically run by default so there's a few other options here where we can add a start uh, we can start the control panel minimized so that just means that this control panel here is going to be minimized uh, so that's really again a different preference uh, depending on how you want to run your applications. Some people just want them to start and have it minimized and not have to look at the control panel and they're up and running. Uh, so there's also enable the Tomcat output uh, window. So that's another uh, default there that's uh, checked off by default to check default ports on startup. So it's another thing to keep in mind that by default we've got different ports that we're using uh, for the internet. So sometimes you might have applications that are conflicting with those ports, those web ports. Uh, so there you've got an option to service uh, the port settings. So you can change if you don't want to use the main port of 80 and the SSL port of 4 43, you can update those within the service. Or if you've got that conflicting application, a lot of times Skype will use port 80 as well. So this will create a conflict if you've got both of the applications running at the same time. So always be mindful of the fact that you're reserving port 80 and when you've got XAMPP up and running, then you're going to be using port 80. 
You can also configure and update the language. Not a whole lot of choice. You can do American or German, so whatever suits your preference. Really not a lot of options there. And once you've made your selections and you've configured your configuration of the control panel, you're ready to go and you can save it. So there's a few other options here as well that we're gonna quickly run through. So we've got Netstat, which tells us all the different uh, TCP listening sockets that are available so we can go through those as well and see what's open. We've also got a shell so if we want to run a command line interface if we want to write some command line codes then this opens up the window and allows us to do that here as well and then of course we can navigate through the command line and we've also got uh, Explorer for the root folder of XAMPP so if you click this, it's going to automatically default you to the root folder. And again, I'm on a Windows machine, so I've got my root folder, I've got XAMPP there, and I've got all of the XAMPP files. So this is ever essentially what gets installed when you install XAMPP, and you've also got your start and stop and control panel and everything in between. And by default, your htdocs is the default folder that XAMPP starts in and we've got the index file which actually redirects it I believe to dashboard. Dashboard helps pick a language and gives you a customized output, some more information about XAMPP, how to use it and so on. So it's a lot of got a lot of good information there that you can quickly and easily see. So this is the default directory that XAMPP starts in and of course when you're seeing you're hitting Explorer then you're going to go to wherever you've installed XAMPP at. So that's why it's opening that up. Uh, we've also got some quick links here to services. This is the same thing when you open up your computer services, you can see all of them. There's some more information, help about XAMPP. So there's a link there to go over to the forum to find out more about XAMPP. And then of course, we also have quit. So to shut that down and close the control panel. So those are essentially the main configuration options and the main options for the control panel. In the next lesson, we're gonna be looking at in more detail about setting up a custom folder because as mentioned, sometimes you might not wanna run on that default XAMPP folder wherever you've installed it and you might have your files sitting in a directory that you wanna use, such as is in my case where I've got a folder on my K drive, I've got websites, JS, and I wanna make this my root folder. So that's what we're gonna be showing you in the upcoming lesson, how to set that up and start to customize your installation of XAMPP and getting it accessing the folders that you want accessed. So that's coming up in the next lesson.